Welcome to the Off the Grid Biz Podcast, a place for conversations about out-of-the-box businesses with heavy e-commerce elements. I'm Brian Pombo. When thinking about your business or project, what do you think about when I say phrases like customer service, ideal customer profile, and content marketing? I know these are kind of dry and they're they're overused so often, cliches in the industry, but today's conversation is going to uncover how to bring these concepts into actual real life for your business and how you can profit from them. Here's our very first conversation for this podcast, and if you stay until the very end, I'm going to go over some of my takeaways from it. Listen to this. If you're someone who refuses to go along to get along, if you question whether the status quo is good enough for you and your family, if you want to leave this world better off than you found it and you consider independence a sacred thing, you may be a prepper, a gardener, a homesteader, a survivalist, a farmer, a rancher, an environmentalist, or a rugged outdoorsman. We are here to celebrate you. Whether you're looking to improve your maverick business or to find out more about the latest products and services available to the Weekend Rebel, from selling chicken eggs online to building up your food storage or collecting handmade soap, this show is for those who choose the road less traveled, the road to self-reliance, for those that are living a daring adventure, life off the grid. Greg Key is the owner of Haas Tools. Born and raised in South Georgia, Greg has been involved with agriculture and horticulture for over 30 years. He's witnessed how food was grown years ago on a small family farm, all the way to the huge corporations that dominate agriculture today. Being a big believer in clean, healthy food, Greg started Haas Tools to help people grow their own food with quality tools and supplies. He enjoys growing food sustainably on a 10-acre homestead with his wife of 34 years two dogs, eight chickens, two horses, and one jackass. Preserving the harvest, making wine, and enjoying his four children keeps them busy. Grandchildren. Grand, sorry, four grandchildren. Appreciate you coming on the show, Greg. Welcome. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here, Brian. Yeah, this is really great. Why don't you give everyone an idea of what it is that you do? About nine years ago, we started a company called Hoss Tools, and our goal is to give people the tools, supplies, and information for them to be successful in growing their own food. That's great. How did you get started in all this? Back in the early 2000s, we kind of seen a trend where a lot of products were being imported in here. They were being sold, but they was not being supported. So if you went and bought a product and it tore up, you simply threw it away and went and bought another product. And the quality of the gardening tools we've seen was, was on the demise. So I thought, you know, there's got to be a better way. So what we decided to do was start a company, manufacture as much product as we could in the USA, and make a jam-up quality product and support it. There's nothing I hate more than to call a company and get a recording. So when you call Hoss Tools, you get somebody that answers the phone, and we're going to be here to help you. We're going to support you. We're going to do whatever it takes for you to be successful using our tools and our supplies. Quality tools, quality customer service, that's really cool. That sounds great. You guys have so many things on your site right now. You've got your wheel hoe, one of the signature things you guys have, the cedars, shovels, spades, forks, man, tools of every kind of machetes, knives, axes, raised gardening bed kits, irrigation equipment, pest control, fertilizers, food preservation tools, whether you're fermenting or pickling. I mean, a lot of great stuff on there. Out of all that stuff, what would you say is your top selling product? Well, the first product that we ever started with was the wheel hoe, and that continues to be our number one seller. However, every product that you see on our site, which is around 300, and we're in the process now adding uh, several more, we have tested and we have looked at and we've made sure it's good quality product. So we're familiar with everything we say. We can tell you everything about it, and, uh, and we support that. However, the wheel hose continues to be our number one seller. Is it the single wheel that sells the most or the double wheel or a little bit of all of them? Yeah, believe it or not, it's about half and half. We sell about equal amounts of each one. One of the main ways that I found you guys, I was searching for these types of markets, but the thing that stood out to me about Haas Tools 
was the amount of information that you all have out there. Especially if you just go through your YouTube channel and look at all the videos you have. And they, these aren't videos, folks, that are just commercials selling their products. They're going deep into the personal knowledge that they have in gardening with these tools and they go into specifics on different vegetables. And so I just have to ask you, there's a lot of our audience are, are going to be preppers and so forth, uh, homesteaders. And what would you say are the foods that can grow with the least amount of refrigeration or no refrigeration afterward? What are the foods that are going to last? You got the foods that we all love out there, like sweet corn and things like that that we love. But the fact is it didn't have much of a shelf life. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big believer in growing your own food. Then you got to have the staples that will that will last. And some of the things that we have tested, that we've grown, that we've gotten pretty good at is those vegetables that last. To give you an example, the winter squash, the pumpkins, which could easily fall into winter squash category, mm -hmm. sweet potatoes, onions, leeks, garlics, all those really store well, and they store well without refrigeration. So those are a lot of the things that we like to grow that we can put up and we can store and we can eat them all winter long. And I think a lot of people out there are missing the boat on growing some of these great crops that can give you a food source without refrigeration. You know, I live in South Georgia, and we had a major hurricane, Michael, to come through here that knocked us out of power for seven days. We could go out there to the, uh, to the garden shed, where we had our vegetables you stored up, and we could get onions, we could get garlic, we could get sweet potatoes, we could get winter squash that we had laid out there, and we could go fire the gas grill up, and we could have a meal. Not only that, but, I mean, it's just a good way to prepare yourself, to have that skill set to grow those vegetables that will last for a long time, and also prepare it. I mean, we do a lot of canning. We do a lot of you know, things like that around here. Having that skill set to do that so these foods store so you can have a food source during the wintertime or heaven forbid something happen. You can have those food source when you don't have electricity. Yeah, that's great info. And we'll get more into what you guys do on your YouTube channel and so forth through your videos later. Who would you say is your ideal customer? What's their mindset? Where are they coming from? Let me put it this way. Let me tell you who our customer is because that's, mm -hmm. that's ideally who our ideal customer is, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Sure. Our customer is 85% male, and they seem to be anywhere from the 25 to, you know, 70, 80-year-old. We have some 80-something-year-olds some that call in every night. However, we have to treat that older group a little different than we do the millennials, the younger group. What we find is the younger customers we have are starving for information. They don't know how to do this and how to do that. So we're trying to put enough content out there to give them the information they need to be able to use our tools and supplies. However, that older group recognizes a good tool or supply, and they simply just want to call and buy it. So we don't have to do as much as education with the older group as we do with the younger group. What I have found about the millennials out there is they're starving for information. They're starving to learn things that they can't find anywhere. And that's where our YouTube channel comes in so effective there. And it's just an amazing thing to me to see these young people out there want to learn and have these skill sets that have been lost through generation. Uh, absolutely. That, that makes a whole lot of sense because, I mean, it just when I was going to high school 20 years back, I took ag classes and everything, and we, we learned a little bit, but they don't really teach you the down and dirty of how to grow, just what you guys are teaching on your channel. I learned so much just by sitting there and watching it or listening to your podcast. That, that's really good info. In that. So you're saying by going out there and teaching this, you're also bringing in customers that way. Without you even doing a hard sell, they're coming back your direction and, and buying the product. Yeah, we don't believe in the hard sale. And we do something, I guess you could classify it as the soft sale, or we rather prefer to it as content marketing. That's what we put content out there, show people what they can do with our products. And if it fits what they need, then they can come by. That's exactly what we try to do. And that's been our strategy from day one is to do content marketing and do a great job at it. Oh, that's a great point. What do you like most about this business and this industry? What I like most about it is my customers are exactly like I am. So I've been in uh, I've been in a few businesses before my life where I had to deal with the uh, very wealthy people being in agriculture and horticulture in my early days, and uh, it was very profitable. But I, people that are consumed with the way they are, they're very rich and they're very consumable type people, is not who I am, and I don't like necessarily hanging out with those kind of people. Mm -hmm. The customers that I have today of Hall Sewell's 
exactly who I am. And they're what I like to say is they're my kind of people. And that's what I love about this business here is I'm doing people that have the same interest that I do and have the same passions that I do. And that makes it all worthwhile. Absolutely. What would be your biggest gripes with your business or your industry? Well, you know, we're going through a lot of consolidations now. Back 15, 20 years ago, you seen a lot of mom and pop stores on the internet that were selling things uh, that they that they had. Those days are gone by the wayside. Amazon has took a lot of the mom and pops and pushed them out of the way. And I, I that's some, it's the way of life, and it's something that we're going to have to adjust to. And I understand it's a natural natural progression. However, it does bother me a little bit there that, that Amazon just took so much of the marketplace out there and snuffed the mom and pop out a little bit. And it's changed the way that we do business. However, like I said earlier, that's just a natural progression of things. And we just have to learn to deal with it. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to jump in and interrupt the conversation I had with Greg. He was just talking about Amazon.com. And if you're running an e-commerce platform, chances are you have some opinions about Amazon.com and Jeff Bezos. Now, you may see him as the devil, and Amazon.com is an absolute apocalypse on the e-commerce community. You may see Amazon as being helpful. Either way, no one can deny that Amazon.com has had an impact on the industry as a whole. When talking to owners and executives of e-commerce companies, one of the most common issues I see over and over again is them asking, how do we handle Amazon? Do we work with them? Do we work against them? Do we try to get around them? They certainly can't be ignored, at least in most industries. So I actually developed a technique that I can walk you through in a little thing I call a strategy session. We could do it over the phone or we could do it over video chat. And I would be able to take your specific company and customize a solution to help Amazon proof your website. If you're interested in Amazon proofing your website, go to brianjpombo.com slash Amazon, and that will take you to the Amazon Proof My Website strategy session. Now, normally I charge $600 for this one hour session. Now, there's no doubt that $600 is a great deal for what you're getting back from this. But since I'm trying to test out podcasting and see what our reach is, if you add in the coupon code POD01, P-O-D-01, you will be discounted all the way down to $60. I'm going to take a zero right off the end. You will only pay $60 for an hour-long strategy session. This is not a sales call. I'm not trying to rope you into anything else. If there's something I can help you with beyond that, we can discuss that later. Within that hour, though, we are going to talk about actual solutions, actual strategies that your company can take to make your website Amazon proof, to make it to where Amazon is no longer a major competitive force against you, that you can actually work around Amazon, it will no longer be a detriment to your company. So, like I said, brianjpombo.com slash Amazon. And now, back to the conversation with Greg. So, where are you finding new customers at? Besides this media that you're putting out there, where else are you finding customers? Well, Facebook. I mean, we do a little bit on Facebook. Uh, YouTube is our biggest driver. Yeah. Facebook is entirely different than YouTube is, and you got to treat them differently. We do some lead generation through Facebook. However, you got to be real careful with your content because your content don't do near as good on Facebook as it does on YouTube. But it is a good starting place to plant that seed and then move them over to YouTube. Uh, if you notice your friends and everything is big into Facebook, they have these real social personalities. And it's a social platform. It's where you can go and relax, look at your cousins, pictures, look at their babies, you know, catch up on things. But you don't go to Facebook to learn anything. However, you go to YouTube to learn something. You go to YouTube to learn instructional stuff. If you've got a question about a product or you want to review a product or a way of life, you go to YouTube to search that out. You don't do it on Facebook. So you have to create, you know, you have to treat those two mediums completely different. But we have been successful in doing some lead generation on Facebook. Wow. That's really good. Any other places? Is that your main places where you're getting customers right now? Yeah, it is. I mean, Instagram's up and growing. A lot of people I talk to are, you know, are doing extremely well on Instagram. 
I do not know much about Instagram, but mm-hmm. if I was, uh, I would look at Instagram very hard. The top three, I think, right now is Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and YouTube. YouTube probably being at the top of that list. It drives probably around 30 to 40% of our business, YouTube does. Very cool. I can see videos going back to 2012 on there. You have over 19,000 subscribers on there. Your row by row garden show with you and Travis hosting. For those of you who don't know, go and check them out on YouTube, Haas Tools. And you can see Greg and Travis there and they'll sit there and they'll talk and they go through all these different items talking about growing specific vegetables and so forth and what they're doing and and what they're dealing with during that season. It's really interesting because they could take a show that's so simple with just the camera sitting there. And then at the same time, you guys also have the podcast, which is just the audio of you talking available over on iTunes and other places. So you could check them out there too. Do you find that the customers that are coming to you are more educated in general by the time they get to you? If they've been watching your, your YouTube videos and so forth, are they coming with more educated questions and so forth? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And another thing, too, we get our, our Row by Row Garden show. We also have a Row by Row Facebook group that mm-hmm. we about a year ago that they can if they're really a facebook person they can watch it on facebook we have the two different channels there they can watch on facebook or they can watch it over on youtube however youtube seems to be the best driver with that with that medium there so let me explain to you what we try to do with our youtube channel with our products and i would encourage other business to do the same thing mm-hmm. go to your customer service the person that answers the phone to your business every day and talks to the front person at the phone that talks to the customer. Let them write down the top five questions that they get, whether it be product, whether it be store hours, whatever it be, the top five main concerns that she or he answers on an everyday basis. And that's the first thing you do is you make a video addressing those pain points. So you take those five, and this gives you a start. You take those five, and you make a video addressing each one of those. And what you have done is you've answered that question for that customer, and you've made it easy for that customer to get that answer, and you've took that burden off your customer service. So that's the first thing you do. And then after you do that, then you can move it into some more of the soft sale content marketing. That's great advice. If we were to talk again like a year from now, what would have had to have happened over the last 12 months for you to feel happy with the progress concerning your business? Well, we're in the garden industry, and what we find in the garden industry is when the stock market is doing well and when the economy is doing good, we have less people gardening. So we're kind of in the mode right now. We're, we're, we're satisfied with a decent percent amount of growth. We've grown every year, and we can see, continue to see that. And we don't want to grow a lot because we can't handle that. We want to have steady growth every year, and we think we're going to experience that, even with a good economy. We are adding a seed line for this coming year, and it's a pretty big endeavor for us. And we're adding 120 to 130 different varieties come springtime. It's going to be interesting to see that how that happens. We're going to back these varieties up with support that we've grown and we've looked at them. And we know these are good varieties. Seed business is a competitive business. So we got to be on our game to be here and be able to sell seeds. And we got to give people a compelling reason to buy from us instead of buying from somebody else. So uh, a year from now when we talk, I hope you ask me, was the seed business a good decision to make? I hope I would tell you yes. Fabulous. Going into a whole new line. That's great. What are the main obstacles do you see standing in your way from getting to where you want to get with seeds within a year? Oh, I just like getting the word out there. Like, and like I said earlier, giving people a compelling, because, you know, there's everybody selling seeds, but giving people a compelling reason to know why they should come to us. Mm-hmm. We're spending thousands of dollars to put in a climate control warehouse so we can control the temperature and the humidity so that our seeds germination will hold up better. We're going to do pack to order. If somebody wants a pound, they can call in and we'll pack a pound and send it to them. We're real proud of the fact we get most of our orders out the same day. What we have to do is compare they all those points that I just mentioned all the way to the customer and make them understand why they should buy from us. And if we can do that, then I think we'll be successful. Awesome. Greg, this has been a great talk, a great look into your industry and where you've come from on this. It's really, really interesting. Let's say someone's brand new to Haas Tools. What could a listener do? What would you recommend them do if they're interested in finding out more about your products? Oh, absolutely. Go to our YouTube channel, join our, our Facebook group, Row by Row. But what we have found with our Facebook group is we're pretty knowledgeable about what we do, but 
there's a lot of people that we have that we've sold to, that we've interacted with, that are part of our Facebook group that can answer a lot of garden questions. So if you have a problem with any type of garden or you got a question, post it there on the Facebook group. If we don't answer it, some of the rest of them can chime in there and maybe give a little different opinion on that. That's the great part of the group is the interaction in there. If you simply got a question about our products, about our company, you can go to YouTube and we've got, I think, close to 200 different videos. So you can definitely probably find the answer there somewhere. Wow. So cool. Greg Key, owner of Haas Tools. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that was a really good conversation. In a short period of time, Greg went over a lot of ideas that I'd like to go back and put a little finer point on. First off, when he's discussing his concept of an ideal customer or target market, one of the first things he points out is it's people that are looking to grow their own food. Well, that's a very clear idea. And when he gets into the demographics of 85% male, ages 25 to 80, and talking about the difference between the younger customer and the older customer, the younger customer being starved for information, which is where their content marketing comes into play. And if you look at what he's doing for content marketing and why, having a huge focus on their YouTube, and this isn't necessarily something that you would want to do to focus primarily on video. You have to look at your market, look at what you have the ability to do and what you think you'd work out best at, but focus on it. Once you find your form of content marketing, nothing works greater than having content marketing that educates entertains and drives traffic back to your website. Look at what he's doing with YouTube. They have regular shows. They have personalities on there. They're actually discussing the thing that the person wants to do, which is grow their own food and discussing everything around that. They're not just promoting a product. They're not just promoting their tools or their upcoming seed line. They're discussing everything around it, making it entertaining, informational. That helps relate with people and actually starts driving people back to your website eventually then becoming customers. But in the meantime, in the very beginning, they're getting to know you. Know, like, and trust you is a term that comes from old time sales. People that know you, like you, and trust you are ones that are going to do business with you, not just once, but ongoing. Also, the fact that he defined his customer as my customers are exactly like I am. You know, my type of people, my kind of people. And I'd like to point out, if you hate your customers or your clientele, you're going to be in big trouble. If you look at the fact that he relates so much with his customers that he believes he knows what they're looking for and he talks with his customers both via social media and via a customer service line and the people that are running customer service. His focus on ideal customer service on actually having a live person who could answer the phone, someone there local that they can discuss with, relating that back to the content marketing. So creating content based on the most common questions that you get back. That is such a huge service that you could provide. And that step will make you more relatable back to your customer base. It becomes a virtuous loop where you get to know your customers better, You serve them better. You answer their questions before they actually post them. And it makes your whole process work 10 times more effective. Also, Greg has a very clear understanding of the flow of the customers. So he knows that if he's meeting them on Facebook, he wants to bring them over to YouTube and educate them a little more. And from there, eventually get them to the website. The speed of getting someone to purchase does not necessarily mean that they're going to purchase ongoing, but that relationship, building the relationship via your content is what's going to grow things long term. And finally, the question that he put out asking, what do my customers need? What does my market need? And going back to them and finding out what they're looking for more of led them to developing a new seed line and actually start producing seeds or delivering seeds to the market This is the Disney model. If you watch what the Disney Corporation has done, they go back and they look at, okay, what do they need next? Disney starts off with babies. You see Minnie Mouse 
on the diapers. You see all these characters being introduced as early as possible. And then they take them the next step. Okay, what is the next thing? The next age group, what are they looking for? They have an entire channel playing to preschoolers with all the characters. They have toys associated with them. Every step of the way throughout your entire life, there's a place for Disney that they're producing content directly to you, regardless of what age or gender you are. If you could step back and look at your business and try to find a way to be able to speak directly to people ongoing in the same way and ask them, really, what do they need next? Okay, once they have the seats, what do they need next? What is the information that my market is asking for? What are the visitors to my website looking for more of? If you're talking to them directly, like via live over the phone, that makes a big difference. If you're talking via social media to your customer base, that's going to help you out a whole lot. The whole idea is to really get inside your customer's head and answer the questions they have before they even pose them. I think this has been a great start for our podcast and where we're going in the future. I think we're going to be going more in depth into these concepts over time. So be sure and stay tuned. Go and visit brianjpombo.com to find out more about me and what I offer. And come back for episode two. We got another great conversation coming right up. Join us again on the next Off the Grid Biz Podcast, brought to you by the team at brianjpombo.com, helping successful but overworked entrepreneurs transform their companies into dream assets. That's B-R-I-A-N-J-P-O-M-B-O.com. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the Off the Grid Biz Podcast, go to offthegridbiz.com slash contact. Those who appear on the show do not necessarily endorse my beliefs, suggestions or advice or any of the services provided by our sponsor our theme music is cold sun by dell our executive producer and head researcher is sean e douglas i'm brian pombo and until next time i wish you peace freedom and success